2.1 Welcome to a new lecture in control system. In this lecture, we will be focusing on the steady state error for non-unity feedback systems. I wish to inform you that the previous lecture was for unity feedback systems. You may go through that lecture before attending this video. Myself, Dr. Lalu Saban from the Department of Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering, NIT Silchar. The objectives of this video is to discuss the practical case of non-unity feedback in control system, then to understand the concept of error from two different perspectives. First one from a controller design perspective and then from the process operation perspective. Both of these errors are important and many a times the nomenclature is confusing also. Then we will calculate the steady state error for unity feedback, non-unity feedback systems for two different perspectives. Later, we will be seeing a shortcut methods mainly for competitive exams. So coming to the non-unity feedback system, the only difference the non-unity feedback system is having with respect to unity feedback system is the feedback component will possess some dynamics. That means it will be having a transfer function other than unity. The DC gain that means when limit s tends to 0 of the transfer function of the feedback path may be also a non-unity value. Why we are having feedback dynamics? The feedback path usually represented by feedback consists of sensor, transmitter and the signal conditioning part. All these physical components possess some dynamics. So, it will be most of the cases a non-unity transfer function. Because it's having a non-unity transfer function, the measured output ym of t will not be equal to the actual output y of t. So both in the transient case as well as in the steady state case. Now let us see the error from a controller design perspective. So what is the purpose of the controller? The controller is to design the input to the process of course to the actuator such that this particular input acting on the process will take the process output to the desired value r of t. So in perfect control the y of t should be equal to the reference r of t. That means the difference between these two values should be very close to zero. So the controller algorithm uses the value of error okay from now onwards which we will call it as a measured error because we are not having the actual error the physical quantity that is physically happening but from an electronic or electrical point of view we are getting the measured value of the process variable which as we as we have discussed may be different from y of t. Now this measured error em of t which is 
the difference between r of t and ym of t is used for designing the control output. So in most of the controller, the control output will be a function of the measured error. Now, what will be the steady state error? Better, the steady state measured error. So we can apply the final value theorem. Em of s for different values or, or different signals of r of s. We can always have the relation between Em of s and r of s. That is very straightforward which we derived in the last lecture. And applying the final value theorem, we can find the steady state measured error. And using the transfer function relation, uh, it will look like equation number 1. So it is a very straightforward concept. Now, this is important from a control perspective. But as I have discussed, from an overall operation perspective, we are interested in the process variable. The process variable is going to the market in the form of concentration, quality and all. So, this y of t should be equal to r of t. Okay. So, not ym of t. Okay. Ideally, definitely ym of t should be close to y of t that we cannot guarantee because the feedback path is having some dynamics. So from an overall process operation, the error is the difference between the reference value r of t and actual process output y of t. So now let us try to analyze that part. So this is the uh, Laplace representation of the previous block diagrams. In Laplace domain we can represent the actual error and the measured error. There is a scary condition. Because in the control room what we are having? In the control room we are having the measured value ym of t or ym of yeah ym of t. Definitely we will be having the reference signal. So we can easily calculate the measured error. So one of the scary condition is that the measured error will be a constant but the actual error is keep on increasing or keep on decreasing to infinity. Certain transfer function of these GV of us, GP of us, H of us combination give such a condition which is very scary. Now let us go to our objective that is to find the steady state error from an overall perspective. Now I am going to replace these three forward path blocks by g of s. g of s, h of s is the feedback path transfer function, this is the Laplace form of the measured signal. Now what I will be going to do is to determine the steady state error of course from an overall perspective using the concept of unity feedback system. It is possible to extend the error constant concept that is position error constant, velocity error constant, acceleration error constants represented by kp, kv and ka here also. For that purpose we have to rearrange or represent this non-unity feedback system to an equivalent unity feedback system. But 
a precaution i just wish to info uh, wish to remind you that before applying that concept you should make sure that the closed loop system is stable otherwise you cannot use it now what we have done here in the feedback path we have added two loops one of gain minus 1 and another one of gain 1 so the net effect in the feedback path will be zero so this three feedback path is going to the summation point of course all are having a negative feedback negative is getting multiplied by minus 1 now this is summation point what is the net sum of these two loops it is h of first minus 1 okay this minus is common so taking that we can rearrange it further the h of first and minus 1 loop combine together to form a single block and the gains plus 1 remain same now if you look here this is a forward path with a transfer function g of first and this is a feedback negative feedback of course negative feedback with a transfer function h of s minus 1 so using the concept of block diagram reduction these two blocks can be combined together so it will be the forward path transfer function divided by 1 plus the product of forward path transfer function and feedback path transfer function hence we can combine it together and the combined transfer function will be g of s upon 1 plus g of s into h of s minus 1 which we will call as z of s now see we have quickly transformed that non unity feedback system to a unity feedback system to an equivalent unity feedback system now the solution is very straightforward we can use the values of kp kv and ka as the error constants so kp will be limit s tends to 0 z of s the forward path transfer function kv will be limit s tends to 0 s into z of s and k the acceleration error constant is equal to limit s tends to 0 s to the power 2 z of s good now straight forward we have completed it i wish to give you a shortcut method also which you can use for competitive exams but this shortcut method is having a constraint that it can be only used when the dc gain of the feedback path is a constant dc gain means when we substitute s is equal to 0 of the transfer function if it is a constant uh, we can apply this strategy in, in most of the cases you will get such a feedback transfer function now so this h of s the dc gain is k of kh so we can easily rearrange this block for an equivalent block diagram so the kh from the feedback path is transformed here as well as here so em of s will remain the same which is the difference between r of s and kh times y of s so net if you if you just take this point em of s will remain as r of s minus the gain times y of s the gain of the feedback path times y of s so the net effect is the same so again using the same concept 
we can find the position error constant which is equal to limit s tends to 0 kh times g of s kv will be limit s tends to 0 s kh g of s and acceleration error constant k will be limit s tends to 0 s to the power 2 kh g of s it is very uh, simple right now so when you are having such cases you can apply the straightforward shortcut method so once you are having the error constants you can find the steady state error for different systems for different kind of reference signals this table gives the relation for unit step input type 0 system the steady state error is 1 upon 1 plus kp for unit ramp input for type 1 system it will be 1 upon kv this is constant for parabolic signal unit parabolic signal for type 2 system will be having a constant steady state error which will be equal to 1 upon ka so the zero steady state error and infinity steady state error condition can be visualized here now let us try to do a small problem the forward path transfer function is given it's a second order system the feedback path transfer function is given a first order system now what is the dc gain of this feedback path dc gain s tends to 0 that means 1 upon 0 plus 2 that means the dc gain of the feedback path will be equal to 0.5 and for a reference signal of phi by s in laplace domain that means a unit sorry it's a step signal with magnitude 5 calculate the steady state error calculate the steady state measured error so you can pause the video and solve this problem the solution the answer is given here you may have to do the solution and verify the answer thank you